All right, my friends, this is my first show ever. Welcome to Real Talk with Dom. My first guest tonight is Anthony from Possess Tranquility. Under WLFEDB Radio, we are here and we are now. I'm going into the commercial and here we are. All right, add a stream. Anthony, you are a possessed tranquility. Hello, my friend. Hello, how are you doing? I hope that intro went well. I wasn't really sure. This is my first night, and I apologize <laughs> for everything that goes wrong, but you are my first guest, and I am grateful for that with real time. Um, um, I'm happy to be here, Dom. Absolutely. Um, you and I have went back what a couple years now going back and forth for projects um and in reality it's it's one of these things where it's like i heard you out of nowhere and i was drawn to you right away your voice the words the the um just the the mis the mystery behind your music is is just great um you want to explain that a little bit as far as how you go into music uh, how I fell into it or how I started writing that song? <laughs> well, all of it, because we're going to talk about a lot of music as we go. But, yeah, just just the unexplained and, and just the way you write and where you go with it. You know, um, mostly it's just stuck in my head, right? So between these two ears are, are not the, a safe space for most, <laughs> but it is for me. So what I do is I lock myself in the studio. Uh, and start with lyrics sometimes, and uh, sometimes it's just a beat or a rhythm and a melody. Uh, and then, of course, some of the band ma members, as you know, Kaylee on guitar and Corey on bass and Jason on drums, you know, we kind of pitch in, and, and Kaylee does some writing in the background as far as guitar portions and other pieces. But the vibe for The Unexplained really was a kind of a fluke deal. As you know, we did a lot of paranormal stuff, and uh, we were a house band for a show uh, for the CW for a while and filmed the season uh, during that time they didn't have a theme then and it was something we went back and wrote re really in like one day but it was really something we were you know we have a dark kind of centric vibe to us anyway so for us it was really easy to get in that you know in that mode and that mood shut down go in the studio and then just basically start writing the music which was very euphoric really is how we felt it and then it came out with the uh, the lyrics, which is really just about the unexplained things that happen in the world that, you know, if you pay attention, you might just witness something, right? So that's really what it's about. Yes, and I totally paid attention to your lyrics, and that's what grabbed me. And I'm just like, I have to get a hold of, the, of, of these, these people. And you know what I did? And with that, we became friends as well. So, you know, as you're out there in the universe, you know, you're, you're sharing music, a nobody like myself was able to get a hold of you and here we are right now today you know yeah. as you as my first guest which is great <laughs> well like i said i'm happy to be here dom this is great to be an opportunity to something very new and again we've been kind of uh you know we kind of did our, our music launch and our first album and video about six years ago uh, and it actually had really good you know feedback and positive results right and uh then life happened and all of us kind of moved separate ways but uh, we still stay connected. We're still kind of that band family. Uh, yeah. We still uh, stay close in contact. Um, matter of fact, there's some projects on the side that I do work with Kaylee on. Uh, and Kaylee has her own thing as well. But again, PT is you know, the core of our hearts, really. So let's, let's not uh, delay anything here. You have something new. Yes, we do. We have a few things new, right? So um, 2020 hasn't been kind to a lot of folks. <laughs> so for us, it hasn't been kind to us either. And I think we've, throughout the couple of years now, we've been trying to get together and make things happen. And slowly but surely, we've, we've put together some tracks. And as everybody knows, Dropbox and, 
and other, you know, iClouds and stuff like that. So we're still able to share and collaborate. Um, the thing is, we wanted to launch something probably a couple of years ago. We just never had had a chance to do it. Um, so 2020 happened, COVID happened, and now we've, it's literally given us time to reflect, especially for me to sit in the studio uh, along with Kaylee and Core and others and basically sit down and, and start. I, I would say, you know, we had stuff archived that was really good songs, and we just never finished them. And now we're finishing them, and they're getting done. So we want to launch a free COVID album, really, that will be hopefully ready by Christmas. Right. You know, the, wor the world needs something in a way where it's like there's there's a gift. And a, I always said music is a gift because everyone enjoys that. Right. At this time, I could see uh, my mentor is on and I want to introduce you to him and I'm going to bring him on. Uh, this is Talk With Teddy and here and we're adding him on right now. All right. And looks like he just left the room. As soon as he, as soon as he gets in the chair. <laughs> anyway, uh, he'll get on and I'll introduce him as we go. But yeah. Uh, on the realist part, um, you know I write poetry, things like that. Uh, you read some of my writings. I did. Uh, what what brings you to your lyrics when you when you go into it? Uh, certain experiences, right? So for me, um, you know, Bending, when we wrote that album, uh, that was done in some very dark times as well, right? So I think for me, it was a lot of uh, deep mind thoughts of things where people circle around and never really have a uh, a way out. So, you know, there's Hear You Calling, right? If people listen to that, um, it's got some really big meaning to, you know, basically falling down and, and further and further you go, but people act like they want to help, but they never really do. Um, so the lyrics basically came out of a lot of emotion, a lot of things that happened throughout the years and not just to myself, to others. So, and that's something that's special about this next album is there's some songs that will be released that again, we've been writing for years, um, that are part of, you know, Corey has lyrics to one of them, right. And a lot of these things apply to a lot of the band members. So, uh, you'll be able to see a lot of different, you know, emotions come out of those. I understand, you know, and it's like, uh, I told you the other day on the phone, uh, I keep listening to the song Another Day. Um, yeah. And every time I listen to it, it means something different to me, but it means something to me. And I'm not sure if it deciphers in the same way that you wrote it. So, you know, it just means something. Ted, this is Anthony of Possessed. Anthony, this Anthony. is Ted of Doc with Teddy. How are you? Hey guys, can, can everyone hear each other? Can, can you yeah, see me? I I can hear you now, and I can see you. There you go. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah. My show ran a little late. That's why I'm late. <laughs> no, that's fine. I just I want to catch up a little bit. We've been talking. Um, you know, we talked about his new album coming out. Um, uh, how we're going to the lyrics. You're a musician yourself, so it actually makes it work. You're my mentor on uh, WLFEDB, and you're helping me out so much. So. It's a pleasure having you co-host this one with me. You're technically, I'm under your wing. But yeah, so let's get right back into it. Um, concerts and stuff, Anthony, what, what, what's the future hold? Right now, you know, it's tough, right? We, we'd like to live stream. Uh, we'd like to do shows like that. But unfortunately, you know, we're located in three different states now, right? So you've got, you know, Corey's out in Las Vegas and... Uh, you know, we got Kaylee and myself here in Washington, and then of course Jason's still in California. So that's a tough one to do. So again, this is something that you know we decided we just want to put out the free album for the fans. Um, again, it was a great launch back. You know, when we launched our first video, it was welcome with open arms. It was a sold out show, uh, and then we kind of disappeared really because it was one of those times again. Life happens, and everybody moved and had new careers at the time. Um, so this one we really don't have a live show or anything scheduled just because of COVID. So it's, it's a hard time for a lot of musicians. And I think this is where Kaylee and myself and, you know, and Corey and Jason, you, know, you kind of just have that time where you have to just really focus on what we've done in the past and resurrect those and take them out of the archives and work on them and then start trying to build that. And, and again, even at this point during COVID, it's something we want to charge for. This is something we just want to, you know, give back to our fans and give them a free album here. 
Yeah, that's really cool because, you know, like I said, someone needs someone needs a gift out of everything that we went through. And uh, just your music alone um, sets a tone for relaxation in a way where it's like you could think about it. Now, I'll get into different bands here in a few. Um, what you remind me of, because it's it's a shame I could say any band re reminds me of something. But, you know, one of my favorite artists is Davey Havoc. And everyone knows that who that is right afi and black audio yeah when you guys go into it um your tone is is dark and then up it just reminds me of that stage of music of black audio which i love i can i could listen to it over and over and i've listened to your album over and over again too so it's like ah it's a pleasure just listening to it and then you guys giving a gift to the world by saying here's some free music you know just to enjoy to get back on your feet not you, but the world. Here right. you go. I think it's cool, my friend. <laughs> well, thank you, Dom. Thank you. That's. Yeah. I mean, again, it's, we've been through it too, right? So we're all humans, even though you know people think you know musicians are different. We're we're the same way, really. We go through our same emotions, the same problems. We're locked up. We can't see family. We can't see friends. There's things we'd like to do over the summer, all kinds of things, and you know you can't. So, you know, for us, especially for myself and, and, you know, other music writers, the only thing you have is to write, right? So I'm sitting in the studio now, and this is where I live when I have my happiness, right, is sitting in here and getting everything mentally out of my head into, you know, a track and, and trying to get that and, and arrive at a location that I'm pleased with, which as a musician, you never are, right? You're the, the worst critic of everything. So it's never really done, but to others, it might be great, crappy, you know, whatever it is amazing to some uh i've had fans say that they cry to some of the songs literally and i still think wow that's really good that people see it that way although my perspective is totally different but to get that out and share with somebody because you know we all go through it is, is really meaningful it's true ted what do you feel about some of this because you being a musician yourself well, you know, I kind of jumped in the middle of some of this, so I didn't hear it all. But, I, you know, I related to some of the things he was talking about. I mean, with the whole thing with COVID, um, myself and, and several band members, as well as people I know in Nashville that are, you know, trying to make a go of it. They haven't been able to do anything. The writing and performing to so on and so forth down the road has become very, very difficult. Um, a lot of them have said, jokingly, of course, though, but by the time this whole COVID thing is done, they'll probably have five albums written. Um, and, and that's simply because, you know, some songs can take 10 minutes, some songs can take five months. I mean, it depends on, you know, when it comes, what inspires you and so on and so forth. But um, I know it's been tough on the entertainment business the most, you know, um, because they have not been able to, to perform, no matter what genre of music you play. And um, w w with Anthony here, with giving a, you know giving away a, 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 an album that's awesome, um, it keeps people inspired. It keeps them coming back, um, especially when you can touch them. And that's one of the best things you could talk about with music is that the way it touches somebody, and it touches everybody differently, you know. But when you can get a foot tapping, if you can get somebody's emotions and play with with a song, whether it be crying, laughing or just wanting to scream and take their clothes off and dance around, I mean, you're doing your part. You're doing your job. You know, you've got something that matters uh, with music. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not familiar with his stuff that well. Um, and I come from an area of music where it was mostly uh, gospel, country, um, some classic rock, stuff like that. But music is music. And it all comes from the heart one way or another. Um, I know that I write a lot of um, what they would consider world music. Um, it's it's very off base from from a lot of stuff, but I was raised and I fell in love with bands like Dream Theater, you know, or yeah. ACDC. Um, I, but I also liked, um, let's see, uh, uh, what was one of the other ones? I would have to say like uh, Enya, you know, or Kataro, or there's all these different bands that I fell in love with. Uh, Bill Miller, who was actually Native, he was a Native American writer, singer songwriter, and his music was, it touched me immensely, you know. Um, but I, I, I love the music. I love what all of us are doing in this in, in, in this day and age because it's difficult. And if we can get one album out or one song out, we're accomplishing a great thing because 
most everybody's stuck behind closed doors, can't get in a studio. And if you do, you have people that are doing recording at home, shipping it off to somebody else for them to do their part, you know, and then overlaying all of that to create one song because of COVID. So it's been tough. You know, so. I, I really like what Ted's saying there, too, because uh, everyone born has a passion. You know, everyone has a dream not to sit behind a cash register and, and shit like that, because we are a parental advisory. I'll say the first curse word ever on Real Talk with Tom. <laughs> but, you know, everyone, you know, this is the time that artists really should put things out there, because when you're stuck at home, you can't do anything. This is where you take your passion and you push forward. You know, the three of us have been out there in the world and pushing what we do but now's the time to just kind of take over and just do what we want like you it's know it's not easy though Tom. i mean it's, it's not, not. I mean, some things are some things are shut off I mean, I, some things you're yeah. not able to get to so you know if you if you have all the equipment in 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 your house or in your basement to where you can create a video or record yeah. your music and get a direct line and get it out i mean that's one thing but if you're you're running with a, a signed contract with, say, Sony Records. You have to follow their process. You have to do what they tell you to do. So most of the time, you know, the bands that I know or individuals that are signed, they're just sitting home. They're writing. Yeah, no, that, that's I hear what you. They're doing. That's all they're doing. Sure, you can write all day long. You can you can say take the bull by the horns, but the majority of what they're going to be able to do is to sit there and write their music or call their friends and say, hey, I got this piece. I'm going to email it to you and. Pretty much that's it. Until COVID goes away, performances, live performances, and stuff like that are being done yeah. in basements, living rooms. Yeah. You know, so I've seen a bunch of concerts of online now. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm getting invites to buy forty dollar concerts to watch from here, and I'm like, yeah, I didn't pay that to go see you live. Right. You know. Right. Well, but COVID has done it, man. The expenses, the everything, it's inflation. <laughs> It's yeah, yeah. I mean, cigarette a pack of cigarettes in New York right now is almost thirteen bucks. So wow. you know, it's it's that's what's happening. Yeah. You know, Good thing I don't smoke. Money. Yeah, but yeah, but that was a point was that you know things that used to be cheap, whether you be going to a live concert and your tickets were fifteen dollars, now they're forty forty five. It's yeah, I hear you. It's the situation well, we're in. We're broke. Everybody's broke. Nobody yeah. has any money. Yeah, we we just work in what it is and. uh let, uh, let me swing back to Anthony real quick. Anthony, um, send me back to your roots of where you started with music. Oh, boy. That was uh, many, many years ago. I uh, started with a trumpet, actually, you know, down in elementary school. Yeah, way back in the day. I still remember this guy's name. Till the day I die, I'll remember him. Dr. Ferringer, right? PhD in music. Um, literally the most advanced person I ever met when it comes to theory of music, writing, the emotions, collaborating, putting things together in sequence, understanding, you know, basically how it operates, but then also understanding the freelance part of it, right? The, the emotion of don't, you know, you take that theory, but then you apply it. And, and I never really learned that, you know, through when you start in third grade and you, you know, mess around fourth, fifth, right? And I got up into high school and I basically transferred into drums. So I actually was a drummer for many years. Um, but I, it, it never left me what he's actually taught me, the ability to learn from, a, you know, a doctor in music that, that went to Juilliard that actually had theory down and came back to, you know, a small town called Pomona, California, right? And uh, that guy was amazing to me, and I, I'm not sure he's alive today. I, I really doubt it, but uh, the things he taught me, to be honest with you, were amazing, and yeah. I still live them today. It stuck with you. That's, that's yeah. amazing. Growing up as a kid, um, for you, for you, what was your favorite song? What was your inspiration besides all that? What was your, one of your favorite songs growing up that you could go back and listen to in your age now and say, shit, I still love this song? Shit, I got, I got a ton of those. That's the problem there, Dom. I, you know, I, I was one of those before there was, a, what do they call that, emo today, right? It was like new age back then and goth back then. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I was into Robert Smith, right? The Cure. I was into Midnight Oil. I was into <laughs> Duran Duran. I was into <laughs> right. Oingo Boingo. I mean, th these are the old school, right, bands that I would, I love ska, right? So you talk about the specials. You talk about, you know, old bands like that that I really like. So I, I come from a, a, a basically a melting pot, right? So That's really cool. 
Yeah. So I, I, and, and I grew up in Pomona, right? So I literally grew up in Pomona, California. Uh, and we had the Pomona theater, the Fox theater there on, I want to say it was second street or third street, downtown Pomona. And a lot of bands came through there. Flock of Seagulls, Duran Duran, wow. um, you name them. Right. And they, I mean, till this day, I still remember being a kid and, and borrowing money from my dad and having to work on the weekends to cut more lawns, right. Or go to the gas station and pull out labor to make sure I can pay for it. But I made those concerts and those were the inspiration that planted yeah. those seeds and they're like, I got to keep doing music and I love it. So uh, yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. And you know what? I got the same question. Teddy's a musician. <laughs> what was his favorite bands that growing up that he's able to say, Hey, I still love as a kid. I want to ask you the same question, my friend. Oh man, that is terrible because I, I, I was into a melting pot of stuff too, but you know, as a kid, I mean, uh, the number one person that influenced my life was Elvis Presley, to be honest with you. Um, Kentucky uh, Ray keeps falling down. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, it's just, it, it's, I, I, my father was in the military. He was on the same base. Uh, my mom loved Elvis Presley. Um, that was one of my biggest influences, and I still listen to his music today. Uh, Good. Yeah. ACDC, ACDC was huge for me. And yeah. I hate that man. I hate them with a passion. Oh, I don't. I went to their concert. One of my very yeah. first concerts was ACDC. Um, of course, we were all high as a kite because everybody was smoking pot at the time. Um, the whole the whole concert was like that. and uh, But it was one of the best concerts. I would crocus oak open for them. It was one of my favorite, you know, concerts yeah. of all time. But I sat through so many different types of concerts. Everything from, like, Dolly Parton to... Kenny Rogers to, yeah. you know, I think influence and people, there's going to be people laughing at that, but you know, nobody should laugh at that. You know, I'm just saying that influence comes from every corner of the world, yeah. world especially in music. I mean, there's music today, uh, which is the uh, uh, Mongolian throat music from a band like the who, and I, and I love their music, Yeah, you know, and uh, like I said, Bill Miller, native American stuff like that. But, Today, I can sit down, and, and I'll be honest with you, I have a sixth uh, CD changer disc um, thing in my truck, and I will tell you that four CDs are ACDC and albums, and then the other two are uh, mixed country. So that's that's yeah. what's in my truck. That's what that's I listen cool. to every single day. <laughs> country is heartbreak to me anymore. I don't listen to country. I used to love it. I don't listen to it no more. I listen well, to a lot of heavy, like heavy so metal. so different. Country is so different. It's more... Yeah. Today's country is more like what '80s pop was. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's 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 got good beat. It's got good stories. It's got the only thing it doesn't have is the spiked hair and the purple tips and all yeah. that shit. But you know, my so favorite like... song. No one will ever ever recognize this with me. My favorite song ever is by Tupac, and it's called mm -hmm. "Paint." And I don't listen to rap, but it's from <laughs> the above. There is, I, I, it's called "Above the Rim," the movie. And you yeah. can't find it on any album but a tape. But Tupac Pain is my favorite song ever. And then, yeah, like, I would have never guessed that either. No, you. that's exactly it. No one says like what. And then, like, it's like death metal. Lamb of God is on weird. my head. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was weird. <clears throat> so it's just one of those things, man. Like music, music is so, it's so universal. It just yeah. it touches emotions everywhere. You yeah. know. Well, you know, uh, they say, I mean, music basically helps you fall in love. It helps true. you get over love, um, a broken heart. It, it, it helps you um, see the future. It helps you move on. It helps you um, deal with so many situations in your life. I mean, they say that love is the most powerful world. And I say, okay, yeah, love is the most powerful world. But then after that comes music because well, music has got the power. You know. Interesting, interesting situation we're in because I I told Anthony before you jumped on, Another Day is one of my favorite tracks by him. And I keep listening to it and listening to it. And I go back into my heartache and heartbreak of, of what I'm going through. And I'm not sure if that's where the song goes, but I listen to it and I relate to it in some kind of way. Mm. Mm. So I'm just like, wow, this is really cool. Now, that's cool though. I mean, if you can find a song that you relate to, I mean, it doesn't matter who the band is or the musician. I mean, that's that's a powerful thing. That's yeah, the whole absolutely. reason of you know music being the number two world or you know word in the world because you know it, it, emotions, like you said, and all that, and 
if you can relate to it, then then you found something that yeah. belongs to you in some sense. It's just that somebody else created it and feels yeah. the same way you did and put this out there for you. It's it's a connection, man. It's like the silver thread, you know, no, connecting it, yeah. people, but through music. It's really cool. Yeah. It's a really cool line. Now, Anthony, let's get into something. Let's let's talk about you for a moment. Where yeah. can we find your albums? Where can we find your page? Please tell the world where to find you. Yeah, so we do have uh, a Facebook, and it's actually linked in our Reverb Nation. Reverb Nation, I'll tell you to go there because right now, uh, today, we just launched our um, our free song, right? So I think I sent it to you. Um, it I'll should be posted. So That's the name of it, right? I let you down. I'll, I'll let, let you let down. down. Yeah. yeah. So that actually, one's really. I have it. I have it for Dom because he, yeah, okay. he couldn't do it. So I have it for him to play if he wants to, when he wants to. <laughs> no, it, yeah, it's going to happen at the end. So right. long story short with this, I'm so dumb with technology. I do the raw footage and camera and set up lights. <laughs> but when it comes down to all this, like Ted's like, yeah, you got to learn it. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying. Sorry. So He's not dumb. He just doesn't just know it. I mean, it's not dumb. It's just you got to learn, man. Yeah, That's you'll cool. learn it. It, you, it doesn't it take long. Time. No, but you'll yeah. be fine. I'm new to this, but yeah. Anyway, keep going with where we can find you on all forums, just so everyone hears. Well, right now, like I said, just because we're getting back into this, right now, go to the ReverbNation.com, Possessed Tranquility. Uh, you'll see all the links there for our Facebook, right? Um, our website, we still have to update, but if you go to Reverb Nation, that's where we'll post our free album. But right now, you can get I'll Let You Down tonight for free. Uh, that's the latest and greatest. Uh, and then by Christmas, there should be a complete album that's released um, for the fans there. So, and through Reverb Nation, through your Facebook, as you know, Dom, you can see us linked there as well. So, you know, we're we're having to get caught up with social media again. Being on hiatus for about six years, it's coming back, to, you know, full circle that for us to start getting back into updating our websites, updating our social media. Uh, you know, unfortunately, again, we can't get together to do you know, videos or, or photos and things like that. So the least we can do is give our fans, you know, the ability to get a, a free album. So that'll be posted by Christmas. Good deal. And as a fan, I appreciate that. So thank you to you and your band itself. Yeah, um, you know, they're amazing. They're all amazing. Like I said, every single one of them plays a big part. I, I mean, I, I may write some of the lyrics or all the lyrics and, and the music. Kaylee contributes, Corey contributes, and Jason does. I mean, literally... Possessed tranquility is, is, is us four. We, you know, we've tried when we moved away, and I'll, I'll tell you this little bit of a story, and, and Jason knows this, right, where we put out an ad for a drummer, and uh, that lasted about five minutes, uh, even during the uh, tryout. So uh, the audition was uh, not very well met. When, when Kaylee calls the shots, when she unplugs her guitar and walks away, that pretty much tells us we're done with this audition. So she walked away and said, there's nobody's going to replace Jason at this point. And we will never replace Jason. <laughs> That's sweet. That's just real. So there's going to be come a time. I mean, this is show one for me and you're my first guest. I want to have a time where we can have your entire band on here. Yeah. We can all talk and just like collaborate on how you guys just kind of put your work together and build the structure of what you do. That would be amazing for me. I mean, I would, I would appreciate that just being a fan of you guys. We'd love to, Dom. We'd love to. I know they want to be here tonight, but again, you know, first shows, right? So I'll, I'll be the guinea pig and we'll go from there, but everybody's available next time. We can get all, you know, all the members of Obsessed Tranquility on and we'll be happy to go through this. Sure. I, I, I'm sorry you're the guinea pig of the night, but you were my first, <laughs> you were my first thought. Oh, That's yeah. okay. I, I I am honored that you actually picked me. So I'm I'm glad that our, our like you said, the last couple of years we've been speaking and, and working on things, but it actually came to fruition tonight. So I'm happy yeah. about that. Uh, yeah, it, we, we definitely, we're, we're doing this and we're going to go further and we're going to keep pushing and pushing and we're, we're just going to do this. And uh, Ted, WLFEDB gave me the chance, opportunity to change up my career in order to just be myself and talk in a way like I can meet, you know, uh, somebody like you and just push your work out there and just still being entertainment at the same time. I love it. So thank you all for this. Um, Anytime. So let's, uh, let's go into music again. Let's, uh, what's future plans going into, you know, as we go, say, say when COVID lifts, uh, live shows, have you, have you, 
talk to venues and stuff to get in or or what are you what are you thinking actually so so I'll, I'll go back to the pt days when we first started right so we we've always been um a band that will write everything record it finish it and then usually we somehow miraculously even now if you look at possess tranquility in the seattle area uh we're either number one or number two and we haven't done anything in six years and that just goes to show you yeah that goes to show you the fan base that's supportive of us right. um and and i think what's going to happen after covid and this is what I, I know that all of us want is covid will lift you know uh vaccines will happen whatever happens to make it safe out there again for all of us we will be able to play live shows again and that means we will start in seattle area and we'll work our way down through the west coast through oregon through california back to our home base in fresno california um, and then from there, hopefully that just spreads like wildfire because we, we definitely want to continue, right? We, we miss it as much as the fans do. And if you go to YouTube and you look at any of our songs that are played uh, on YouTube, there's a million channels out there that, you know, we had no idea. We've just been following it here and there. Yeah. But the fans are very dedicated. I mean, this, you know, you got comments two months ago, but, we, you know, those things are posted six years ago. And now you've got people going, when are these guys coming back? I can't wait for them to come back. So I think – the plan would be to let's release this, this, this free album for the fans. Let's see what COVID has in store for us. And also, you know, keeping positive and making sure that we can stay positive as much as we can through this time of, of waiting for the opportunity to go play live again. And then we go back to the studio, right? We go back to the studio, we rehearse, um, you know, Jason flies up here, we fly down there. We're all family. We'll get together. We'll knock it out in a weekend. We've done it before. Um, we filmed 26 episodes or 15 episodes in one weekend for a paranormal show. So that oh, is not a problem for us to get together. <laughs> it's weird. That's what I'm trying to get into next is paranormal because I know you're in that world as we all are uh, here where we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we enjoyed it. It was a great ride. Um, it took us to a lot of places, opened up a lot of doors for us. Um, people were knocking at our door to film free videos and help us with production and all kinds of things. And we really did. Like I said, it's a little scary and at the same time it's very um humbling right because y you do the music for the people and the fans and, and everything else to get out your emotions and one thing that people don't realize is when you're a musician you're literally exposing yourself to every critic that's out there and you know you can bomb and people can say you suck and some people can boo you uh on the other hand we were i would say 90 percent of it was open arms people really enjoyed the music we were we we're different we're we've always been different we're never going to be labeled as one thing or another but the best thing about that is our fans will drive us to do what we need to do and i think that's exactly what we're looking for in the next year is covid lifts and we got enough you know steam rolling from the fans request we will definitely come out we will start doing a tour we will start playing shows again so that's what i'm looking forward to and i'm sure the band is as well that's sweet and if you guys come to east coast go to new york because i'll fly up there and i you know i'll support you well, we have no problem going to the East Coast. Like I said, we've, we've done some Vegas shows. That's about as far east as we got. We were supposed to do a Texas show, and then that got canceled again in COVID. So, I mean, we, we've almost got there. We'll, we're working on it, Dom. So anything that uh, you got planned will come out. Indeed. Well, Ted, I, any thoughts here? Well, I was just going to say that I, I, I know a lot of large clubs out this way and, and avenues uh, and that, that would take you. I mean, there, there are a lot of places in New York. That's where I'm from. And there's a lot of places up here in New York. We used to tour from New York all the way down the East Coast to Florida and then back up. Um, that was something we did for five years straight. And it was a lot of fun. So yeah. um, I definitely know places. So definitely, if you want to come this way, hook, hook up with me and I'll set you up, you know. You got it, Tim. That, that's something, we, like I said, we're open to it. And all, all it does is give us the opportunity to come back together and play shows from people all over the country that's been asking for us, right? So um, yeah. we need, we owe that to our fans. You know, the thing is, is, you know, when you're a musician and you're like, I just came off of 18 year um, on the stage, uh, 18 years. And, you know, it's, I finally retired from it because it was, it, it was coming to the point where, you know, you get older, certain parts of your body don't work anymore and, you know, all yeah. that stuff. But you know, it, this past year, because of COVID, I've been sitting here biting at the bit, man. It's like, I, I just rehearsed with some of the guys uh, Saturday night, and uh, just to get together and have a couple of drinks and just, just, you know, jam, because we haven't. 
and we're yeah. doing it again in a couple of weeks. And it's just, there's no other feeling in the world when you can get together with a couple of guys and make some beautiful music, no matter where it comes from. And, you know, but once you hit that stage, when we're able to hit the stages again, it's going to be explosive. I think every band that's out there in the world that has been sitting on their hands, as soon as they're able to hit a stage, I, I think you're going to see a really big explosion of music when that happens it's going to be on the radio it's going to be in album sales it's going to be everywhere i really yeah. truly believe that i i agree that I, i've talked to some friends that are still playing other bands right now and they, they've done some live stream shows uh and even friends of ours and uh live stream is okay that gets you through some of the COVID times but it's right. never going to replace the live interaction of on stage you ever can't. ever ever uh, and yeah you can't I mean, and that's... and I think you nailed it though, right? I mean, if you think about it, like I can only perform and rehearse in the studio by myself for so long, but the energy inside me wants to get out on that stage and perform oh, yeah. like we did as PT. And you know, when we when we came out and did our last show, that's exactly what it was like, as it was so energetic. You know, it, it was exactly one thing we prided you know possess tranquility about was we record one way, but we also play live a different way. And we do that on purpose. We, we do that so that people get a recorded version of even, even though it's a great record, you know, recording is produced well, you know, or well enough, should I say, um, the live shows are always energetic. They're full of emotion. They're full of just everything that, you know, with the band on stage, it's, it's, we set up differently. Jason sits in a different spot than normal drummers. We set him up front facing sideways. So you can see every action. We, I stand in the back cause I, I don't, you know, really care for the you know spotlight. I'm, I'm in the back. The two girls, Kaylee and Cora playing guitar and bass up front next to Jason. So we've always had a different, persona about us than most people but when we do live we literally bring that home yeah that's awesome there is no feeling like that i mean it, it... all right so as i learn guys i i'm finally seeing the comments here uh i have a lot of questions for you uh anthony and so okay. I, didn't mean to interrupt you. I just don't understand how this all works yet and it just takes time so <laughs> it just is what it is no um, worries i'm here we're just going to start from the bottom and go our way up. Uh, uh, Shelton, my good friend, who are some of your major influences? Um, boy. So for me, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen our videos and what I play, but I play a MIDI VST Katara, right? It's made by Misa out of Australia. Um, I own three of those, and one that actually was the first one in the United States. And that was sparked by a band called Pendulum. Wow. So if you look at Pendulum, it's it's really um, an electronic kind of, um, you know, they are, right? Yeah. So they're, they're a major influence for myself. However, again, that was more of, you know, I don't, I play a little guitar. Kaylee's really the guitarist. So major influences when it comes to, you know, what I really wanted to do and replicate would be a lot of Pendulum vibe because that was a, it, I would say an extraordinary band that basically broke up, right? And he's now a DJ, and so they're no longer together. And I think we filled a big void in that from a certain aspect. However, we had a filter, Nine Inch Nails, Vibe, you name electronic, dark, but it was also, uh, you know, like you said, it had the up and down in it, right? So the changes, the chord progressions for us were a little bit different than most bands. So, um, you know, it's still dark. So, yeah, I would say Pendulum and maybe Nine Inch Nails were probably my two largest influences. Indeed. Uh, my friend Chris Bolin on here also says he can't wait to do live shows again as well. So um, there are many musicians here that just can't wait to get back to the audience itself because it really, it really gives people that energy to get out there and just let go, you know? So yeah. it's cool. Uh, Genevieve is here, which is the Jersey Shore Ghost Tours. Um yeah, she she's has her part in here. She says hi. A uh, lot of people here. So sorry, guys, I missed you. I'm I'm learning this as we go. So very cool, my friend. And this is and you know Anthony right here is is something that these are people who are now I'm introducing to to, to you to them so they could love your music as well. So hopefully it goes you know hopefully it goes far for you as well as we all go. My my Courtney is on here. I'm so proud and happy of you. Thank you. Yes, but uh, this was a, a a teamwork thing. So yeah, we're we're all together. So very cool. 
it's just right. hey you're doing a good job don no worries you're doing a good job yeah, yeah. you are <laughs> I'm, I'm trying you know it's just my first time you know just is what it is that's well, right. I, I'm I'm sure you've done a lot of these, Ted, and I can I have done a lot as well, and I can tell you I, I've had worse stuff, so this is great. He, yeah, he's so comfortable with it; it makes me so sick to my stomach. Like going into this, he knew I was so stressed. And I'm just like, oh my god, what do I do? <laughs> I told you, one step at a time. Take your time. D, just breathe. You'll be fine. It's it's no big deal. You will get yeah. to it. And it's super cool, and I love conversation. It's just real talk. So, yeah. Anthony, yeah. in your everyday life, um, you know, get away from music and stuff like All that. Right. Just in everyday life, like, what is your everyday life? Being an artist as yourself, like, do you, you know, what do you do? A day in the life of Anthony. Um, I'm up around five in the morning. I'm an early riser. I uh, I train a lot. Yeah. Um, I do jujitsu. So Sweet. I, yeah, I've been, I've been training with, um, Hoist, Hickson, Helson in Hawaii. I've done a lot of training with, uh, military on base. Um, uh, after I get done training, I go to work. I actually, uh, work for a company out here in the project management department and technical writing. So I'm in it. So when it comes to technology, um, it's my forte. So literally these screens in front of me never leave me. They're, they're part of my life. It's, it's, they should just be implanted in my brain. Cause if I'm not doing it for work, I'm doing it when I come home in my studio. So, so see, um, you should be talking to him about all this stuff. IT stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me. And I'll tell you, I'm a third degree black in, uh, in Taekwondo gorilla style. So nice. I agree with the martial arts world of it. Yeah. I'm literally like, you know, I'm 35 now. I can't do what I did at uh, 18 years old and 20 something years old. But yeah, right. I mean, you know, we still kick ass. <laughs> so. it, 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 you're only as old as your mind tells you you are. So to me, that, that you know, age is just a number. Um, yeah. But it keeps you healthy, right? It keeps you disciplined. It, it, it keeps you focused. And without things like that and training and literally staying healthy. And, you know, I do have my drinks every now and then, which is not bad. But you know, the main thing is, is during COVID times and stuff like that, if you don't have those outlets, I, I've also changed my life a lot from when it started. I mean, everybody went through the depression portion of it and anxiety portion. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. When you listen to I'll Let You Down, right, that free song, that has a lot of bearing on what we're going through today. It really does. It's, it's basically the chemicals we've taken to try to subside and, and counterbalance all the things we go through emotionally and you know, mentally and psychologically. So, you know, without those things like training and trying to wake up early and trying to go to bed early, it, it's tough because you will find yourself going through the night. And I've done it for months, right? Where I'm up till two, three in the morning, you know, and I'll still be drinking and I wake up at five or six and drink through the day. And then you're back doing it again. And you're in this vicious cycle of downward spiraling. Um, and those can cause a lot of things not to get, you know, and I'm getting very personal, but it's true. There's a lot of people in, in this country, in this world going through it because of COVID. And even without COVID, people are going through it. So, And you're right. And without COVID, going through my depression, anxiety, what I go through, you know, I will drink from early morning till night. Yeah. On times. It's, it's like, you know, when you're sad, you're sad and no one can tell you. Um, I, I feel like I'm the third wheel here because I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't drink very often. Um, but when I do, I do, you know, drink, of course. Um, yeah. But in, in the whole, like, uh, jujitsu and kung fu and all that stuff, it's like uh, in my dreams. That's about that's about <laughs> the only place uh, I do that stuff. Um, yeah, I'm a big old redneck. I live way out in the country. And, uh, um, but you're not your neck. So, I mean, I don't, I don't. All all those all those things uh, happen in my dreams. I mean, I go to bed at at, at seven eight o'clock in the morning, and I, and I don't get up. You know, I'll go to bed at seven. I'll be up at ten to noon somewhere in there. So I get three four hours of sleep a day, and then I'm working constantly. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't stop until I finally go to bed. You know, yeah. I'm doing three jobs at once, and you know, so many different things. But but COVID, you know, it really has changed a lot of our lives, and it's not the the you know the free flow that we used to have there's so yeah. many obstacles there's so many things that you have to do now and you know i mean here in new york I, I don't know about where you guys are but you know cuomo just shut down all of the the stores and and 
um, the gyms and all that stuff again at 10 o'clock. So it's like you can't, yeah. if you, if you worked out at night, you can't do it anymore. Yeah, you know, no, we're, we're, we're in the same boat. Today. I think um, our governor here in Washington announced tonight the new restrictions, right? So if you have family and friends that you want to get, you know, get around with, with you know, and meet up and, and for Thanksgiving or, or Christmas, that's pretty much shot dead in the water again. So we're going back to the March timeframe. So it, it's right. literally turning back the clock back into that. So it's, it is tough. And, and, you know, like I said, not to put any bearing on other people that drink or not drink, even without that, there is still, in, in my opinion, there's still, you know, an impression of, of anxiety and depression that goes out there because of the world has changed. And, you know, musicians oh, are different from regular people. Regular people are different from hardworking. I mean, yeah. you can go down every line of, of persona of a person that's out there in this country, and it doesn't matter what affiliate, affiliation you are, whether it's religious or a political party, you're all going through it. We're all going through it. And, and, and the sad part about it is, I think really I, I, what I'd look at is, is, you know, just people who have peace, one, you know, once again, and understand that, that we're all in the same boat and somehow we've got to give back to one another, whether that's, you know, an album, playing music, being out there to share something, a good message. Who knows what that is? I don't have the answer, to be honest with you. I don't think anybody does, but I know that I try every day and, and I know that I've gone from that downward spiral to, you know, you wake up and you do have a purpose and you start to focus on that and you start to realize that, hey, there's there's more to this. And um, it, it can get dangerously close for a lot of people where they think there is no way out. This is the worst it's ever going to get. And I'm never going to progress from this. But, you know, if it's not music, there's something out there for people. And, and what I love is sometimes those lyrics will give people that power to focus and go, wow, there is something more than that. Hope, man. Hope. Yeah. Hope yeah. Hope we bleed there. the same blood. You know, you know, it's, it's exactly, tough out there. I mean, and, and what? you know, in some ways I, I, I was thinking while you were, while you were talking, Anthony, it's like, you know, COVID is, it, it really has put a lot of anxiety and depression, a lot of things to people sitting out there that, you know, um, maybe this happened for a reason. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, this is just a thought that maybe, maybe something or someone or it, it's telling us something we need to, we need to start helping each other we need to inspire each other we need to uh heal you yeah. know we need to build each other up instead of tearing each other down i mean maybe I we need to we need to do something like that to turn all this yeah. around who knows i 100 yeah. percent agree i want to go back to the comment section uh it's a it's pretty cool since we all you're you're a writer too we're all writers here uh and off you're an author as well teddy um my friend Sh shelton said any good book recommendations you've read during COVID pandemic? Actually, I haven't read anything I've been writing. <laughs> yeah. I've been reading my own stuff, but um, no, yeah, I, my I actually have not read anything. To, uh, old school Jaws and stuff like that. Like go back into old school, you know. But there are so many pieces of literature out there, you know, really good books and stuff. And, and, and I know that most of the places right now where the libraries are closed or you know, because of this whole COVID thing. But, you know, if you can go to even Walmart and pick up a book, I mean, even something like the past, like you were talking about, Jaws, or or yeah. uh, even one of the old Stephen King novels, you know, uh, would be, well, just sit down and read it, because it is so different from a movie. Because you have exactly. perspective, you know. Um, hell, just pick something that you like. If you're into sci-fi or horror or whatever, go out and pick a book, man, and just, I, I'm sure you'll impress yourself you know, with reading the whole book and, and get something out of it. I mean, in COVID, that's what you need to do or carry around your phone with movies. I mean, indeed. Now we're like talking that. about writing now, Anthony, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. When you go into writing lyrics, how long is the process for you? Is it seconds, days, months? You know, it, 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 it has taken some time months and then days for sure. Days minimum. I, Seconds, I, I have a, um, so I get into this whole vibe when I listen to music, right? And, and I can feel emotion and it kind of drives me in whatever direction I'm going to go. And, and I don't know what direction that is, right? So something may be upbeat, but it's still dark, right? And something may be upbeat and it's a little more happier. It's middle on a bright side. So it depends on the changes, the, the progression, right? And, and all those, uh, there's a lot of factors and, you know, it's funny, I've, I've thought back to the days of when I first wrote the, the PT, the first album, 
and put lyrics to that. And I think about what is the difference between that one and this one that we're actually working on. Um, not a whole lot. There's nothing that tells me this is my, my whole system. I, you know, we, we write the music, we finish it. Um, Kaylee is a great example of she'll finish a guitar track and all of a sudden my entire melody or the structure or the meaning will pivot because that sparked a different emotion. And so every, every sound to me is an instrument that, that will affect where I go. And so that goes from, I mean, every little bell, every tick, every note, every vibration. Um, I sit in my studio and sometimes it's hours. I'll sit in here and play it a hundred times. And then finally I'll, it'll come to me. Although there's been times when I've sat in here and went, wow, this came to me so quickly. I have to, you know, but I don't release it, but I'll go back and go, let me check this out in two weeks. I won't listen to it. And I'll come back and sure enough, be like, wow, that was amazing. I can never recapture that again. Um, there's even times when I've sang lyrics the first time, just because I have so much emotion. Um, you know, my heart is a good example of that from, you know, bending, right. That album, yeah. I sing that, I sing that once I didn't go back and redo it because I could never recapture that emotion again. Uh, that happened with Hear You Calling. And so there's sometimes I will do it first time around and I'll never touch it again because I can never recapture that where I was yeah. feeling at the moment. So it's it's really listening to everything in that music. And like you said, that, that gives somebody meaning. And I always take it from the perspective of what does this mean to me? Never what it can mean to you or anybody else. And again, I love that because I think that translates into so many different versions of what it means for everyone. Totally. Um, I got a, a coming from when I write poetry and, and we, Ted and I talked about this the other night when we we're introduced to my second book, how much shit you actually throw away um, when you actually write something and you like it and then you're like, well, shit, I don't even want this. How much, how much you can throw right in the garbage? Lots. You can, when you get Kaylee, Corey and Jason on here, the next one, you can ask them how many times they say, we want to play this song. Like, I don't want to ever play that song again. I don't yeah. want to ever do it again. Don't care for it. Um, but you know, again, it was an emotion at the time and it probably came out really well, which it did. A lot of people like some of those songs, but when I revisit them, I don't, I want to throw it away. So I've trashed a lot of lyrics. I've trashed a lot of music and out the window, I'll never do them again. So yeah, it, I totally understand. So that's <laughs> cool. All right. So you do know the, uh, the unexplained, uh, that song that is yeah. the thing you, uh, we will play it later also. Ted has your song and he's going to play your new song at the end. I want to talk about the, the ghost world with you because that's how you and I got introduced. Yeah. What is your favorite part of the paranormal? Boy, the unknown. I mean, there's data there and there isn't data. People will dispute left and right of it. Right. So <laughs> I, I think if you, if you took 20 people in a room, you're going to get 10 people that believe it and 10 people that don't and say it's exactly. nonsense, right? Exactly right, yeah. And so for me, I mean, you know, have I personally experienced things? Yeah, I won't say that live on here, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know the answer. Then. I already know the answer. There's been some questionable moments in my life where I went, okay, I'll, maybe I should check what's in my drink again, and then we'll talk about this later. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I, I think that there's, I, I think it, it's intriguing. It's very intriguing because, you know, if you look at some of the, and there's some things that are nonsense. I mean, I, you know, playing out nonsense, right? We can call those and just use logic. But then there's some things, if you look at why certain funding programs are there or certain, you know, Department of Forestry in California has, if you see this kind of creature, don't approach it. And you're going, why would you write that if it didn't exist? So... That's a little scary, and I never thought about that until our last paranormal uh, host brought that up to me, and he showed it to me, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. Unless they just did that to appease the people, but then again, why would you spend all that money to go do that? I'm but not sure. States, states do that stuff. Like, I, I, I'll tell you, Whitehall, New York, when you drive down one of those roads and you see a big yellow sign with Bigfoot in the middle of it, and it says crossing, you're like, okay, who would spend the money on this? If it's not real... Right. Why would they do it? You know, but, you know, I've been in the, and I don't know if Dom has told you, I've been in the paranormal for 36 years. And I, that's what I write my books on. That's what I do. Yeah. And I can tell you that visually, if you think about this, say you had 100 cases that you've worked on over the years. 
I will tell you that probably 90% of those you can explain away. It's yeah. that small little 10%, you have to go back and say, what did I miss? Why is this still sitting on my desk saying, you know, um, unsolved or X-File or whatever? What's different about it? But because the paranormal is still so young and still so new, I mean, we're just scratching the surface of all this stuff. And there's 10,000 freaking paranormal groups across the U- U.S., and that's probably a small, you know, number. But, you know, nobody can work together. They, they all backbite each other. Right. Um, nobody wants to really come up with equipment that really works because we don't know if a ghost really exists. How do you how do you how do you search for something that you don't ex- don't know exists? You don't know what it's made of. You don't know. You know, it's not like Dom. It's not like we can put a needle in your arm and pull your DNA out of a needle. Right. And a needle, you you mean, don't know. The These you know, cameras so... shows that have shows. I don't understand why they exist because, like, when a light blinks, it's like, well, shit, there's a ghost there. Well, who? How do you know? Like, exactly. The exactly. best. Thing, my best thing is an EVP and personal feeling. Nothing else is gonna say there's a ghost there because, you know, as me as a ghost hunter in real life. How am I supposed to even prove to you that they exist? I can never. Yeah. Hey, Dom, you got both my books behind you on that shelf. I can see right behind you. And the very first book up there is Flashlight, Recorder, and Comfortable Shoes. Because yep. those are the things that you need to actually go and investigate a haunting. You don't need anything else unless you got a camera handy. And it's a spirit box. That's why when you said I put I a spirit, spirit box I hate spirit boxes. I hate those things. No, I know. They, Me too. But garbage. But, you know... <clears throat> You you have to have something, and in most cases, it's personal experiences. Yes, is where our proof lies. Yeah, that's it. That's why that's I it. left the TV world because I was going to do a documentary with a friend and things like that. And then you know, when I when I found uh, Anthony, I was working on a show called The Haunted Realtor that I created with um, the, the TV production from uh, the show called House Hunters, working with them. Uh, we made a sizzle reel. I brought David Roundtree in from uh, a show called Ghost Stalkers. They all complied. They all were, everyone did their job, but somehow it didn't work out. Um, not on our end. It was perfect, but I'm glad it happened this way um, right. because we are here now. It, it just is what it is. So I got to so, ask though. So Anthony, what what work have you done with the paranormal? Now, now he's mentioned you've done shows or something. What? Kind of catch me up to speed here. I don't understand. Yeah. Like, so we we really didn't do anything other than we were a house band for a paranormal show, right? That was picked up by the CW for 26 episodes to get a good running on it. Um, it ran locally in Central California. Then I think it went down to Texas and Arizona, Nevada, some places. So obviously it didn't catch on. But we we filmed the 26 episodes. So we we were the house band. So we brought you in from commercial, took you out to commercial. Uh, played a full song right in the middle of somewhere. That's uh, tell, though. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we, you know, we we were fortunate because we got to meet a lot of really good, I would say, producers from Seattle, Lisa Putnam. Uh, you know, not to drop names, but I mean, you know, she basically is a really big producer right out here. Uh, she's credited for finding uh, Tupac and getting him signed. So we were able to work with her. Uh, We went down and filmed in the Fresno Fox Theater down there, which is a very antique, nostalgic, beautiful theater. Um, We have pictures again on our Reverb Nation of that spot. Um, And then, of course, just the experience of working with the crews, the lighting, the production, you know, how to actually, you know, replicate how that's going to look live and how we actually do it in the studio. Um, it was a really cool experience. And then not only that, we got to meet a lot of really good people. So, um, there were some paranormal people that I never heard of before. What was interesting is when we sat on the sidelines, as you know, during a, a, you know, a house band show, we sat there with our instruments in hand and we got to hear all the interviews and the questions and the answers and the answers are what bugged me worse than anything else. I was like, holy crap, you know, shit, we we, we need to start looking more up, you know, look up more when you go outside, but that's right. (laughs) It was it was pretty interesting. It was a it was a good experience. I, I would never I would do it over again. Put it that way. Um, yeah. it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, again, you have certain things that take off and for whatever reasons, and some that don't for whatever reasons. But I would never exchange that for the world. We it got us closer together. We you know we moved out here in in Washington in Seattle area, and we got to go down to California, stay with Jason. 
uh, him and his family, we basically stayed there and crashed at his place for a couple of days while we filmed those 26 episodes. And it was, it was great. I mean, we made a couple of trips to make sure we did another, uh, another show down there, but I mean, you know, paranormal for us was just, uh, uh, to be honest, we got hooked up with the person we interviewed and he just liked our music again. And it had nothing to do with the unexplained, to be honest. It, we, it was just a regular album. And then, like I said, it was, we came back one day to the studio and started writing it. And we just like, let's make a theme song. And that's where the unexplained came from. And it's literally one of the top you know, sellers that we have on our album from the bending. Wow, that is well, I'll tell you, when I walk in the dark at night at like 3 a.m., and I'm under the stars and the moon, and I put that song in my ears, I feel like I'm floating. Like, I friggin' <laughs> love it. I really love it. And I just go away with it. And I fall within your words, and then that mysterious, drifty beat that you have, it just flows <laughs> so friggin' good. You know, it makes me feel like a fucking phantom. You know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Doc. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for putting that out in the world. And thank, thank you for you. liking it. Yeah, and thank you for you, theme. I love the fact that you live in Washington because that's like Bigfoot State. You know. Oh, we so so just so you're aware, Dad and Dog, uh, it's funny. When we moved up here, we didn't realize it was. It was one of those things where <laughs> Kaylee and I were driving around, and we're looking at all these nice Bigfoot coffee stations, and we're like, "What are those?" We didn't realize that this was like the mecca of Bigfoot followers yeah. and yeah. wine. There was actually a great shirt that I wish I would have bought. We were actually in, uh, I want to say it's Le Levensworth, something like that out here. Anyway, there was a winery there, and it had Bigfoot snowboarding with a glass of wine. I wa I wa I'm going to go back and get that shirt because that was great. Yeah. That's awesome. And then I got, a, I got a, a question for you real quick. You remember I showed you, apparently you can't see it right now, but your, your, your thing is right behind me, your symbol. Yeah. So when they messed up that picture and they and they took all your names off of your symbols right there, yeah. May I send that to you and your entire band uh, signs it, and then I'll put that on my wall too, just so Ab you're home with me. Absolutely, send it on down. I'll give you my address, Dom, and we'll all sign it and get it back to you. Hey, Dom, I appreciate that. Uh, down, oh, on, uh, down at the bottom of your screen, there, there should be its layouts and how the. Um, basically what you're seeing on the screen. It's set on the first one, so if you click it to the next one, it'll make all of our things bigger if you want to. You see down at the bottom? Uh, kind of. Wait, you're talking to me, right? Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Wait. There should be... There I, don't be... Really, I, I don't really know yet, so... Okay, so down at the bottom of the screen there, you'll see, like, you see where my picture is down at the bottom, right? I do. Okay, so next to there... Somewhere down in there, there should be different panels. And it's what those panels are is is how look, see there you go. Look at that. See, I'm see? not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so if you move though, if you click different ones, it'll actually give yeah. all of us a bigger, you know. Thing. I see that's that. But that's possessed right there. That's that's possessed tranquility symbol, and he's on my wall. Uh, talk with Teddy's on my wall and the network network WLFBDB and Jen's on the wall. I see Bigfoot <laughs> down below <laughs> and Whitwood right there. <laughs> and nice. My friend Boo. <laughs> there you go. My friend Boo. So yeah, I'm learning, Ted. My bad. <laughs> no, you're, you're good, man. Just you know, just believe it or not, it's kind of like with the band. It's like when you're on stage for the first time, you learn. I mean, you learn by doing it. It's all like hands-on. That's how you learn this stuff. There, it's not like a band can go out and find a, a book and tell you where you're, how you're supposed to set up or how you're supposed to do this or do that or anything. I mean, most of us, like when I started out singing 25, 30 years ago, actually, I started out singing harmony before I started singing lead. And it took me a long time to transition, believe it or not, from harmony to lead because I was used to being in the background just singing harmony. Uh, but I love harmony more than I do the lead, you know. But, you know, it's it's one of those things. There's no rules by, rule book. There's You just get in there and you do it. I mean, yeah. that's it. I mean, well, I'm going to put you both on the spot real quick. All okay. right. Time for me to go. It was nice meeting you, Anthony. No, you know, <laughs> no, both of you just tell me no if this can't happen. Let's say a month or two down the road after Christmas. Um, I'm not sure if this can happen on WLFEDB, 
But Anthony, would you be open to maybe playing live on Real Talk with Dom a few songs? And Teddy, is that available to happen with the network? Uh, definitely. Uh, Anthony, would you be open to that? Yeah, I'd be open to that. Absolutely. Okay. So all let's, they, let's, hey, Dom, pretty much all they have to do is they can set up their board. They can set up their the way that they normally do wherever. And basically, uh, their camera um, will work because they have sound as well. And some of those cameras, yeah. depending on what you have, it, it'll pick it up. I mean, yeah. and it'll be fine. As long as, like, the speakers aren't, like, right in front of it, yeah, it should be fine. No, I, I've I, I, it, I uh, talked with Teddy Ted a couple live bands already that's the way i did it on my show and then i had the acoustic ones i had people come in and just sing play acoustic and that was actually harder than having the whole band play for sure i would love to just push them to the world and just you know the unexplained so people could literally listen to it and feel it the way i do i would love anthony for you to do it live with with you guys you know just say i wish i was still playing because i'd let you push me too but i don't do it anymore (laughs) (laughs) shit Eddie, we'll do it with you too. But Anthony, if you're down, we'll set this up. Yeah, no, it, when COVID lifts or whenever after this, like you said, post Christmas or whatever, and it, and it looks better for all of us, absolutely. Hell yeah. And I thank you for that. And I, I, I guarantee you, people will look forward to seeing a, a, a little bit of live music and they oh, can yeah. just in their own house at 10 o'clock at night and kind of just chill out and listen to you. That's you awesome. You got it. Thank you. You so, got it. Um, Teddy, at this point right now, I want to push WLFEDB because um, I'm learning this as we go to play the November commercial. Is that all right? That's up to you. It's your show. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> all you gotta do is hit it and let it go. There's there <laughs> so go. many people on here. Let me just figure this out. There's so many people that um, there's so many hosts of different shows that if you don't like me, there's there there's just so much variety that what we have. So let me just play the commercial that you know they made for me. Um, And I'm just going to do it. Uh, We'll be right back, guys. WLFE TV Radio.
All right. We're back. Yay. So, everything's good? Audio is good with everyone again? Yeah, we're good. Oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah, I just, I just, I wanted to push that out there because, you know, everyone does it for me. So, yeah, I just want to push everyone's show as well, too. Psychic Cindy, you know, Paratalk Radio with, uh, talk with Teddy as well, too. So, it means a lot to me. Thank it. you. We Ted. appreciate it. I'm sure the network Thank does, too. Sure. Yeah. And that'll be every time. So let's get, let's get back into what we we're talking about. Um, the music wise, uh, for people who are just joining in possibly on different forums, uh, Anthony, uh, how do we find you again? ReverbNation.com forward slash possessed tranquility. Okay. Perfect. And, and if they look in the comments, I did put that in the comments forum. So it is yeah. in the comments there. I'm oh, thank there. you. For yeah. sure. Actually, I'm going to uh, re put it up there again for him. <laughs> so I got I got to give a shout out to to a viewer who's always on Tom Nally. He says you need a big Tom's World sign on this friggin' wall on this wall. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. Tom, thank you for being here, my friend. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people on here. That's cool. So I hope that this pushes possessed and uh, they go pick up his album or their album and and find it the way you know. Their, their words the way I found them too, and they can float in the universe like I do when I listen. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't want this, you know, it's 11 11. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> it, um, fast. it always goes fast. It did. And, you know, at this, at this point, I don't want this to drag any further. Um, I technically kind of want to end the night Come in on. a way. Um, Anthony, how do you feel about that? And Ted, how do you feel about that too? I, I felt that we got out what we want to talk about without dragging on and making it boring. I think we got right to the point and I think we're going to get to another show with a live, uh, concert. Yeah. Soon. You know, hey, you do what you got to do, man. I just came off a two hour show. So no, you know, I, trust me, I, I, I've... <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you know, I understand things where it's like, I don't want to bore any viewers by, you know, cause we have another hour and I'm just like, you know what? We, we got into everything we needed to talk about and yeah. that's cool for me, yeah. you know? Yeah. Anthony, it, it was great meeting you, man. Yeah. Okay. Great meeting you too, Ted. And thank you, Don, for having me on. This was yeah. fantastic. And I think I, I, I thank you both. And Anthony, I totally thank you. And then um, when we go after Christmas, I look forward to saying, Hey, possessed is my guest. And I don't have to talk, and you will be playing your music. You know what I'm That's going to be sure I know because I would love to come back yeah. and check that out. It'd be, it'd be I, great. Yeah, and I think many, many will appreciate that. I think that's the way to go. I think uh, yeah. from Real Talk with Dom, I think that's my Christmas gift. To everyone is watching you, Anthony, as far as <laughs> playing. so straight up. So right on. Thank you very much, Dom. Yeah, mm -hmm. stay on real quick because I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, uh, this is Real Talk with Dom, WLFE-DB -E Radio. Um, it's my first night. Bear with me. And I just want to thank everybody for being here. And uh, we're going to close this off, guys. All right? All right, man. Sounds Indeed. Good. Anthony. Yeah. We'll be in touch, my friend. Thank you for everything. Hey, did you want to play his song? Yes. Play the song. Yeah. <laughs> but don't okay, forget, you can, you can go to the site and it's free, guys. So everybody listening to the show, go ahead and yeah. download it. No, play it right now because I'm just, I, you know, that's cool. Can't hear it or is it... Uh... Is it on there or not? Can you hear it? No, not I really. Hmm. Well, that's weird. I might have to send it to you, Dom, because if I can't get it to play through my stuff... You you host the show, so you may have to play it. <laughs> I don't know how to do it, but I I heard it pretty well there, and it sounded good. Oh, you did hear it? Yeah. Oh, I might think... just be me. Oh, I it's low. Know. No, you got some people commenting. It's low, so yeah. Hold on, I... hold, on hold on. 
Let's see if I can make that happen. See those vocals, Anthony, right there. Just the way you went into it, I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Shit, I'm going to be walking at 3 a.m. floating again. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one, I think. We'll see. You know. Yeah. We'll... See, that sounds good to me. Good, you can hear it. Good. I got to tell you, I, oh, you shit. do you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of like some really like upbeat, cool freaking Enigma. Enigma was one of my favorite bands of all time. And, and I love that. That was awesome. So, Teddy, as I Thank just tried to end the show, I've got a lot more fucking questions now for that. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. Go figure. Oh, it's like. We're not going to keep everyone so long, but Anthony, that was fucking fantastic. Honestly, like your, your voice is drifting, um, in a way that's mysterious and just brings you in. Uh, Teddy, how do you feel about, how do you like, how well, do you I like it? I liked it. I thought it was great. Is that you singing the lead? Yeah, that's me. Wow, yeah. Man, that's great. great voice. You Thank you. Great voice. Wow. It actually gave me the chills, and when a song can give me the chills, I'm good. And it's not because it's cold in here. I'm just saying that. <laughs> that's good to know. See, that's, I, mean, what, I do have I a heard, heater. But. When I heard The Unexplained, it did the same shit for me, and this song just did it again for me, and then the song Another Day, as we talked about. Like, it does the same thing. Like, it just it goes into I, your I, I love this music. I, I, I myself could, could put this in my you know CD player and just play it all the time. Like I yeah. said, I, I like, like, I write alternative music, and for me, it, it's kind of, um, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of Enigma. I'm sorry, that's the only thing I can compare it to. I love that type of music. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, it, and it really resonates with me. So, and mine was Black Audio, awesome. with Davey yeah. Havoc, but he, his voice is so different from Davey Havoc. It's like, it's this very dark, uh, I think you just like that word. That's what I think. I think it's you like really, the word dark, but I, I, I loved, I, I don't know. It, it's great. It's the way it's, it, it's just smooth. It's a smooth transition from, yeah, the, with the lyrics and, and all that. It's, it's just very cool. Very well, I, I wasn't explaining the way where it's dark. It's dark with a light to it. So it's like there, that mysterious feel to it. Oh, while yeah, being like, that. And, yeah. yeah so that's that. what I'm trying to explain with music, what, the way I hear it. So oh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah, so I, awesome. I, I think it's awesome. So well, thank you guys. I, that's, I, that's... I, I may have to get that album just for my own. Oh yeah, I'm totally buying it for sure. <laughs> you don't have to remember, guys. It's all free. That's the first one that's out, but the rest of the album will be out for Christmas, and it's all free for the fans and you guys. Awesome. For sure, awesome. I'm a fan now. I'm a fan. And I thank you, Tim. Uh, make that one of those on the tracks, the unexplained for when we do the live concert here. So we're ready to go. and We know what's going on. So that, that's you, you gonna got be, it. That's going to be awesome, man. It was, so it was, it was really great. You did a good job tonight, Dom. Just yeah, great you. job tonight, Dom. It was really good. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I, I totally appreciate it. But um, 
let's let's end this now because you know what? Let's let's not leave on a high note. Yeah, yeah. let's yes, <laughs> thank you guys for everything. I'll see you guys next Monday. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Dom. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. You guys have a great night. You too. Indeed. Thanks, man. Have nice a good one. Okay. Bye, guys. everyone. Bye.